In this video, we're going to be looking at a question from the Maths Leave Insert Paper 2 from 2022. You'll find some timestamps below the video if you want to skip to a specific question. And also, if you want to go to a different question that I'm covering in this video, check out the playlist that you should find a link for in the description below. And this is question seven. It's about uh, interpreting data, putting data up on a chart, then we're gonna be finding some probabilities and we're gonna be doing some counting as well and always a bit of problem solving. Now, part A um, tells you a story about uh, animal shelter. There's dogs and cats, or I think that might come in later. There's an animal shelter right now and it tells us animal A goes in and it's uh, 4.5 kilos and when it comes out, it's 4.8. And that's what all of this data means. And for part one, they ask us to fill in this uh, stem and leaf uh, plot. Now, what's a stem and leaf plot? I'm gonna have to, I'll leave that for you guys to look up in your book. It's in your book, uh, Google search as well will give you pretty good data, but I'd stick to the book because it might just be slightly different in Ireland than in other places in the world. Uh, although the, data, the information online is usually pretty good. Um, so, yeah, that's it. You'll learn in your book plenty of ways to do a stem and leaf graph and just put this information in this graph. I'll go through a few of them and then I'll edit out uh, the middle bit and save me being here all day. So day X is on the left, day Y is on the right. So we just need to put here, we'll start with day X here. All these numbers along the top row, I wanna put in here. And how we do that, the four here is this four. So if I put a five here, and at nine here, how you would read this is 4.5. And a different animal, 4.9. If I stay going onto the fives, a tree, a tree, a five, and a seven. So that's 5.3. 5.3 is that one, 5.5, and so on and so on. And now magic of editing, I'll fill in the rest. Okay, that's the rest of them filled in. Just one thing to point out, if you did this in order, you would have put a one, a three, and a zero, instead of a one, three, and a zero, instead of a zero, one, and three. That's fine, uh, you get full marks, but I, I checked in the, the marking scheme just in case. Um, but don't worry, I, when I first did it, I just put one, three, zero. I corrected myself then. It's, it's better to put them in order like this, but it's not that big of a deal. Okay, so that's the stem and graph uh, done. Um, I guess I won't, don't need to talk about why it's useful. We're gonna do that in the next part. And again, you can read up on your own. So for part two, it just asks you, what do you learn from looking at, um, yeah, what do you learn about the weights of the dogs from looking at this? Um, and what I see is their weights were, they've got heavier. You can see a lot of them were in the fives here. Now, more of them are in the six than there were before, and more in the sevens, and more in the eights. If you, in some ways, you can look at this like, if this is the center line, um, it did look like this, and now it looks like, it looks like this. It's moved down a bit. That's what the stem and leaf is um, really good at showing you. When, when, uh, distributions have moved down. Now you don't need to say anything about distributions. Uh, all they want you to say something like their weight increased. In any of your own words, have, read through the book, read about stem and leaves. Just you tell me what you see really and most likely you'll get marks. If you did this correctly, the part two, you'll most likely get marks. Okay, on to uh, part three. They give you these four numbers. They tell you it's the co correlation coefficient which is correct. Now, I'll just give you the answer now, it's 0 0.9, but why is it correct? To do that, I'll just have to tell you a little about correlation and the uh, correlation coefficient. And of course, this, uh, you really need to be reading your own book to, or, and doing some Google searches really to understand this. But just as a rough idea right now, um, if every animal went into this shelter and came out at the same weight, and you put all these numbers on a graph. So uh, five is here and five is here. And they went in and they came out at five. Like if all these numbers were the same, they went in at two, came out at two, three, came out at three. They would look like this. And that would be a perfect correlation, a one, a correlation of plus one. Uh, 
um, if they came uh, and the minuses the minuses just happen when the line goes down like this which won't really matter in this case and then uh, when there's no correlation they went in weighing two and they came out one came out weighing ten the other came out weighing zero the other like the dots would be everywhere let me draw that here this would be a correlation of zero they're just random it says there's no rhyme or reason to it now in this case what happens is the animals go in weighing uh, two and they come out weighing 2.2 uh, they go in weighing uh, one they come out weighing 1.1 1 .1. they 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 all seem to go up a little bit and what you would have here is there'd be a little bit of randomness but the line would look something like that um, on this graph it would look something like this which is also a, a good correlation so it doesn't matter if it goes um, if it's going up high or low maybe maybe it was a terrible shelter maybe the shelter uh, didn't feed any of the animals and they were getting all getting lighter that would still be a good correlation that would still be a high correlation so the correlation isn't saying whether it's good or bad what happened or anything like that it's just saying is is it random or is it not actually that's the best way to say it. is it random or is it not if one animal went in and got heavier that could be random two animals that could be random but all of them got a little bit heavier they probably all got about 10 percent heavier that's not random that has a good correlation and that's what 0 0.9 is the best correlation would be one so this has a really good correlation and that's all they you, again, you'll have to read your book on this, try and find out what is correlation, maybe a few Google searches. I hope this helped a little bit. Okay, in part B, they tell us on a particular Monday, all the animals that are in the shelter make up this table. Um, and they ask us to complete the table. So let's read what they've given us anyway. We have five male cats. We have nine female cats. Uh, we have a total of 14 cats. We have 11 male dogs, and that's it, that's all. Oh, sorry, we have 40 total animals. So there's a few ways to do this. <coughs> if there's 14 cats and 40 total animals, how many dogs must be there? Well, it must be 26 out of the 40. Or, or as well, or, or, um, you could have also put in how many dogs there are, oh, sorry, how many males there are. There's five uh, male cats, 11 male dogs, so that's a total of 16 males. Um, and again, similar stuff gets you all of this. Uh, dogs, there's 26 dogs, 11 males, so that means there must be 15 females. And add these together, we get 24 total females. Uh, 16 plus 24 is 40, good. Uh, 14 plus 26 is 40, good. That's it, that's uh, part uh, B. Okay, part C, find the probability. Oh, sorry, they say uh, three different animals were picked at random um, from the animals in the shelter on this Monday. Find the probability that the first animal picked was a cat. Well, how many cats are there? There are 14 cats. And how many are we picking from? We're picking from a total of 40. So 14 over 40, well that's, I think you might lose one mark for this answer because you can make it a little smaller. Divide them both by two. Seven over 20, that'd be full marks. You could also put this into a calculator and uh, get the decimal place. I think I did that somewhere. Um, yes, zero, oh, well yeah, I guess that's 20 multiplied by five is 100. That multiplied by five is 35 which means that a calculator would give you 0 0.35. Uh, this, this is the correct answer, or this is the correct answer. This is mostly correct, but I think you'd lose uh, one mark for it. Now, for part two of C, um, they, they ask us, find the probability that all three animals, oh yeah, so there's three animals picked. That all three animals picked were male dogs. Uh, give your answer correct at three decimal place. Okay, so what are the chances of picking a male dog, for, first of all, the first animal you pick? Again, we're doing it randomly, we don't know, don't see anything, don't smell anything. Well, there's 11 male dogs out of 40. 
Okay, now we have to pick again, and when we do this, we multiply between them. So the second time, what's the chances we pick a male dog this time? Well, there's only 10 male dogs left. There's not 11 anymore. One of them is standing here next to me. 10 of them are left in the shelter. Total animals in the shelter isn't 40 anymore either. It's 39. And again, the third animal is something similar. There's nine male dogs and there's 38 animals. Put this into a calculator, multiply it all together and we get 0 0.016700 and a few other things. But they did ask us one last part of the question. They did ask you to put it to three decimal places. So uh, one, two, three. So this six is the important number, or I like to look at the number after a dead well. Everyone likes it. So the 67, is it closer to 60 or 70? So it's closer to 70, 0 0.1. Instead of six, seven, we just put seven. That's three decimal places. And uh, that, is, that is the end of part C. Okay, part D, um, oh, pair D is a very short one. Um, it's a weird one though. There is nine female cats, uh, or sorry, nine, there is an, oh, there is nine, okay. Nine female cats were put in nine separate pens. Let me draw them here because that's gonna help me out a bit. Uh, dot, 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 and nine of these in total. How many different ways are, to, are there to do that? So we'll name all the cats, we'll have a, Fluffy, Sprinkles, Rascal, and so on and so on. How many different cats, could, how many ones could I choose from to put in the first pen? Well, there's nine choices. Nine different cats to choose from, any of them could have gone in there. How many could have gone in this uh, second one? There's eight, and then seven, and all the way down to one choice for the last one. You need to multiply those numbers together to get the answer. Um, and you can go ahead and just type all of this into a calculator. There is a faster way, um, nine factorial. There's a button in your calculator that does this. This happens so much in maths, we made a special button for it. But either way, whether you do the long way or the short way, uh, if you multiply it together, you will get a very, very big number, uh, 362,880 different ways to do this. It's a, it's a very big number. Okay, on to part E. Part E is really just a problem solving question. They give you lots of information and get you to figure out a problem. Um, I, I started to rub everything out and I realized I need these numbers still. So uh, what do they tell us? They tell us at the end of the week, uh, 10 animals left. So we're gonna take 10 animals out of the shel shelter and no new animals join the shelter. Then they give us a really important piece of information. Uh, if they picked a animal at random, the chances of picking a dog are 11 over 50. And that's, that's gonna tell us everything really here. Um, and then they ask us the question, which is a bit weird, uh, how many cats left? So they told us about dogs, then how many cats left? So we'll figure all this out as we go on. Um, right, so 10 animals left the shelter. So we know there's only 30 in it now. So let's uh, put in some new numbers. Uh, 30 in the shell. I think the red is pretty hard to see on camera, sorry about that. Uh, 30 here. So I'd love to know how many cats are now and then I could tell you how many left. Okay, so to find out how many cats, we could find out how many dogs instead. And they told us something about dogs. 11 over 15. So, the, so let's forget we know this and ask ourselves, what's the probability of picking a dog at random? Well, how many dogs are in the shelter? We don't know. So when, when we don't know a number, we just write X. How many, how many animals are in the shelter in total? 30. So that's the probability of picking a dog. But they told us the answer. So this is equal to 11 over 15. So 11 over 15 is the same as something over 30. So you should probably be able to see that it's just 22 over 30. Uh, another way to do it more properly would be um, what do you need to multiply 15 by to get 30? So you multiply it by 2. So then you just have to multiply the top by 2. Um, or you could move everything around. 30 would move up here. Multiply both sides by 30. Goes up here. That would become 330 divided by 15 is 22. X equals 22. However you do it, 
we found out that X is 22. That's how many dogs there are. There's 22 dogs. So we can find out how many cats. There's 30 total, 22 dogs. Must be eight cats. And the question, let me get this right, uh, work out the number of cats that left the shelter. There was 14, there's now eight. The correct answer is six. Uh, six, six cats left. Um, something like that. You don't have to write the English. Just write six at the end. I, I, I usually put a little box around my answers, make sure the examiner sees them. Um, I, when I first did this on a piece of paper, I wrote the answer as eight, because I didn't read the question carefully. It's something you should always do. Make sure you are answering their question. Even though you figured out uh, X was 22, that wasn't the answer they wanted. Even though you figured out there was eight cats, that's not the answer they wanted. They wanted how many cats left. So always reread your question at the end. Okay, that's uh, everything there. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments below. I'll do my best to get back to you. Thanks for watching, have a great day.